We've been in the, the cell penetrating peptide field for more than a decade now. And we used to think of cell penetrating peptides as inert vectors, molecules that carry something interesting into a cell. And then Sarah and I had the bright idea a few years ago, thinking about designing peptides that would get into cells and having got into a cell, do something useful. One of the key indicators that came from many of our studies was the fact that if we looked at the, the structure of the peptides that we were manufacturing in Wolverhampton, they were all alpha helical, or they came from alpha helical domains of proteins. And that was a clue to a technology that we, we named bioportide. And back in 2013, we, we started to work on human sperm. And the reason for doing that is that sperm are unlike other cells. The um, delay in a potential male contraceptive has um, been simply because of the fact that sperm are very, very difficult to get things into. And um, we used this cell penetrating peptide technology and we were able um, to sort of like actually get in um, inside, um, inside spermatozoa. And we noticed that our peptides, they went to certain, um, they went to various um, compartments in the sperm. So we could actually target um, specific intracellular domains within sperm. Um, but then we took it a little step further. Um, and then we can get into sperm, but we took this bioportide approach and um, we soon began to realise that not only could we penetrate sperm, we can alter the way sperm behaves. With a unique target in sperm that the Portuguese group have been working on and they, they know, they understand how this protein is regulated and what it does within sperm. It's absolutely essential for the, for the acquisition of motility. So I think we do have something very exciting. And if our lead compounds don't make it to the clinic, I'm pretty certain that the same sort of technology will allow others to repeat it and maybe to achieve that as well. So I'm quite confident that uh, this will lead to something uh, clinically useful. Whether it's a pill, we don't know. Whether it really is a nasal spray, we don't know. You may have to think of some other innovative way of using this. But the advantage, I think, is that because, because of the, the very specific nature of the target, it's going to be reversible. We could quite easily um, enhance sperm motility, which would um, either assist, um, would assist in fertile couples, um, um, sperm could be given, given a little extra oomph, if you like, um, prior to in, in vitro fertilisation, for instance. We see it as a way of complementing IVF. To sow the seeds, if you like, of a potential male contraceptive. And female contraceptives aren't necessarily without their problems or side effects. And, um, there are many, I mean, side effects such as severe migraine and the risk of um, and thrombosis and blood clots and can be particularly de devastating. And there are numerous couples um, in, in which the, the female is unable to take um, the female contraceptive pill. And this would clearly um, allow couples that freedom if it got into further development.